it's important that you have just a bit of an overview of how ideas change in science. This is a kind of nice little Venn diagram because most of what has happened in the changing of our models as our understanding of acids and bases has grown is that we've realized that there are certain substances that behave in a way that we've described as acidic or basic, but our definitions haven't covered all of those examples. So the most, uh, the earliest ideas about acids is that uh, of Antoine Lavoisier and his idea was that acids are substances that contain oxygen. So if we have a look at a substance like sulfuric acid, this is an acid and it does contain oxygen. So therefore uh, it's a little tick in the Lavoisier um, definition but another very common acid that we know about is hydrochloric acid and hydrochloric acid certainly does not have any oxygen in it. So Lavoisier's definition, while it's correct for some acids, is certainly not correct for all. So we needed a better definition. So Humphrey Davy came up with a better definition. He came up with a definition of displaceable hydrogen. Now he was looking at certain types of um, reactions, particularly reactions involving metals. And we now know that certain metals, certainly um, active metals can displace less active metals out of a solution, push them out of the solution. Metals can also push hydrogen ions out of the solution and we get the production of uh, hydrogen gas. So this worked out quite nicely and you can kind of, if you match Davy with displacement, the two Ds, give you a little bit of an idea about how you might remember that Davy's definition was based on displaceable hydrogen. So this was really an observation about reactions. So one very common one we might have seen is if we react magnesium and hydrochloric acid, then we know that we're going to have the magnesium pushing or displacing the hydrogen from the solution. It'll come out as hydrogen gas, nice easy one for a pop test, and we'll leave the salt magnesium chloride behind. So this was a better definition. It incorporated the um, acids that were part of the Lavoisier um, definition, but extended on those to include certainly things like hydrochloric acid, which now um, does fit in terms of its reactions with metals for the Davy definition. But it still didn't go quite far enough. The definition that we probably gave you in the junior school is the one about hydrogen ions and hydroxide ions. So acids are substances that ionize in water to produce hydrogen ions and bases produce hydroxide ions. This is a better and more widespread definition. It enables us to look at things like concentration of acids and bases as it allows us to um, identify some specific relationship between the, hydro, uh, the hydrogen ion concentration and the strength of the solution. So this was a good definition and for all intents and purposes in our junior school, the Arrhenius definition uh, gets a big tick. Because all of the acids that we encounter and all of the acid reactions that we use in our junior uh, science years pretty much all involve acids that liberate hydrogen ions in solution. So it's a very good definition. Uh, it's a very broad definition and you can see as we go through this scale, um, these uh, circles are getting bigger and bigger and um, it incorporates all of the known information that we had up to that point, but still um, there's a few exceptions that it doesn't quite work for. The, de the, the uh, examples of where it doesn't work we will explore in future videos, but for now, the definition that we're going to be concentrating on pretty much for the rest of this module is the Bronsted-Lowry definition. Now Bronsted-Lowry is two people, not one, uh, two different scientists who both were working on um, acids and bases and who recognized that the H plus is actually the element hydrogen that has lost an electron and therefore um, has now become uh, sort of dominantly just a single proton. So the most common isotope of hydrogen is hydrogen one that has one proton and no neutrons. So if it loses its outer shell electron, which is in that first shell, then it's just left as a proton. 
And this proton does all sorts of very interesting things in reactions between different substances. Um, one quick example, which we will have a look at a little bit later on, um, and you can find these very easily on the internet, is if you are able to mix the vapors of ammonia and hydrogen chloride, and I'm going to call it hydrogen chloride, not hydrochloric acid, because both of these are gases, then you find a little kind of white smoke being produced. That white smoke is ammonium chloride. And it's a reaction between the NH3 and the HCl. It's not about carrying out an, a neutralization reaction in a solution, so there are no hydrogen ions present, but nevertheless, it fulfills our definition of uh, an acid and a base. But it only does so if we consider the fact that Bronsted Lowry acids are proton donors. Now, if we were to draw this in a little bit more detail, which we will in class, we find that nitrogen has three bonds and uh, a lone pair um, or an unbonded pair of electrons, uh, which are also present. And it's that unbonded pair of electrons that actually attracts the proton from the, uh, from the acid, from the hydrogen chloride. That moving into there, that attraction between the proton and the unbonded electrons uh, is just that slight extension on the Bronsted-Lowry definition, which is our Lewis acid. So while we describe um, acids in terms of the Bronsted-Lowry definition as proton donors, we describe them um, for Lewis acids as electron acceptors. They're ones that accept electrons from other species.